what I have set up here is the sorts of things that people generally use for stamping. Uh, top of the list is just a little one pound brass hammer, which works for most manufactured stamps. Um, you can choke up on it or you can bring it back to give yourself a little more heft. Um, just a one pound, pretty common. And then also a, a typical block. This is pretty substantial. You might set it on a leather bag. You may have it in the middle of the table, which would uh, give a little too much bow and a little too much bounce. A workaround for that, by the way, when you get into bigger stamps, if you don't have a stump or a larger setup like I do, is to put it on the over the leg of a table. It'll give you um, more of a stump-like feel, uh, it, which is more solid, which is what you need. You don't need it to reverberate at all. You don't need it to give. You want it to, to, to stay there good and steady. But I'm not gonna use that because I've got a nicer setup. That setup includes, oh, by the way, other things that I'm gonna use here are um, a large Sharpie, which is for my quick patina. I'm gonna be using uh, 24 gauge silver, it's dead soft, and then a, an old a 3M polishing pad, which I just use at one stage of the game. And also, by the way, for a quick polish, I also use a uh, one micron blue bristles. I put some new guys on here to help uh, clean it off. That's the uh, look I like. So we're gonna go down in order from things that I use, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. We've got a four pound brass hammer, which in my 60 years old, when I don't feel necessarily strong or I've got a, a larger substantial stamp, I will use this one. Um, when all else fails, I wouldn't, however, wanna use this one on. I dropped it. I wouldn't want to use that on the smaller stamp. Um, I could actually damage the stamp. And of course, whenever you're doing this, consider safety, wear safety glasses. Uh, and these are my stamps are not to be used in a press. So other stamps, or excuse me, other hammers, make sure the lamp's not in view there. Nope. Other hammers that I use, I, I often, my go-to prior to getting this, was this two and a half pound drilling hammer. I like a drilling hammer, I think it uh, drives more force. And there are schools of thought on whether you wanna use a brass or a steel. You know, whatever works for you is wonderful. And then lately I've got a dead blow trusty cook. It's about a two and a half pound hammer as well, which seems to be kind of that magic size. Use it as a hammer or choke up on it. Let's set that aside. Other things we're gonna use are um, paper. I use it sometimes to, as an underlayment, and we'll talk about that. And it just in general to kind of protect the metal while I'm working with it. And also craft foam. Another thing that you can use is um, like a leather. Boy, cat hair, Sally, sorry about that. And um, other things that are important would be the, so for me, my setup is, I have a Cliff Clarrell um, anvil stump, which is has the same um, no give, um, characteristic that a, a stump would have, sort of for your would use. And um, also I've got two really good sized blocks here. Uh, I don't have an anvil. I have one in my garage. But um, so yeah, and the surface of this you would want to be generally smooth. If you think about it, if I were gonna be using a stamp with like this surface or one that's a smooth surface, if while I'm stamping, i use that one a bit. If while I'm stamping, I stamp and the little dent here is underneath when I'm stamping, what's well, not gonna, you know, that's gonna affect the impression, right? So things to consider, and you may like that look. So let's start with here, let's just, I'm gonna go down in order of, of stamps and I'm probably gonna use, I'm gonna use one of these two underlayments. I'm not, I'm gonna just play it by ear here. This used to be my go-to and this has recently entered in my routine. It's a, it's a, a craft foam. Currently, this one's new, not used. All right, I'm gonna work my way down in order. So let's try. This is gonna be the easiest one. We'll start with the easiest one. And uh, this is again, dead soft silver. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna try just the one pound hammer in this case. And what, I, what you generally do with the stamp, you know, when you have some manufactured stamps, particularly letter stamps, you can get away with um, just like one tap, right? Like boom, and it's done. 
and then boom, and it's done. But with uh, other types of design stamps where the design may be unevenly distributed, such as real life, um, you'll want to do a little bit of, of tilting and tapping. So tilt, 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 tilt. Uh, when I do it, it may, it'll appear, it should be pretty much imperceptible, I imagine. But let's give a shot. I'm going to work my way through these and talk about it a little bit as I do. This goes a lot faster when I'm not talking about it. All right, my stamps have a little bit of bite. I take a look at the bottom, we'll take a look at this first one. And then, um, I mean, that actually already has a really good impression. You can tell by looking at the bottom of it. Um, and I think paper was a good choice in this case as an underlayment. What the paper does and what the foam does and what the leather can do is it can, it'll, it'll drive up the details um, into, into the metal. And then this has some flat. For me, this helps kind of clean up the flat areas a little bit. And then don't just bend this off. Sometimes people will use pliers to kind of pop it off, but I've got my Delrin hammer here, which a rawhide would also work. I'm just gonna kind of go around, snap it off. And we'll take a look. That looks super, that looks really good. Let's set that one aside. Trying to work through really fast here. I may do this one twice. I'm gonna probably do it on paper and then we'll try it on craft foam. And I'm gonna be using these impressions as embellishments later. So I'm not gonna use the one, I'm not gonna use the one pound anymore. It's not gonna work for these stamps. I'm gonna use the two and a half pounder. I don't hit it once. I'm hitting it multiple times. And I'm gonna take a peek at that. What's nice about the underlayment as well is it does, good or bad, no, it is good. What it, what's good about it is it, it gives a little bit of a, um, a place to, to lock it in again. And I'm not just gonna leave it at this. I'm not gonna say, oh, okay, I'm done hammering and it's done. Actually, let me look at that. It actually looks pretty good, honestly. If it didn't look good, if it wasn't enough, you know what I do? Bring it back down. Without flattening it yet, lock it back in. Lock it back in, smack it again. And you know, I tend to favor, um, I'm surprised this actually came out uneven or came out even because I tend to um, hit in a certain direction when I stamp and so I usually just turn the, turn everything around and just whack it again and that usually evens out the impression for me and that looks really good for the fun of it I'm gonna do another one on, on uh, foam like I said I would work my way through this here do this one upside down and usually when I do this by the way I don't even think about it anymore is I will set a corner of it. Like this has some a few sharp areas. I wouldn't try to set the round area of this one. I would try to set the sharp area. So that would be my first stamp would be to boom, set that area so it, it, it's less likely to move and or bounce. Let's get this a little more out in the middle here. All right. Oh, that looks good. And just because I did the to do apples to apples, I am going to flip this all around and here, I need both hands to lock it in. And I just, you can tell it's locked in when it's just locked in. I'm gonna flip it around and do the same so that we're talking apples to apples. That looks really good, it looks really good. All right, I'm not lightly tapping it. I'm giving it a good whack. Oh, there's a spider down there. Spiders are good. Spiders are good. All right, let's flatten that out. I'm not trying to dry the impression out. I'm just flattening it, giving it a good flat. All right, those both look good. I might actually flatten them a little bit more. We'll see. On to the next. Let's do the, this is actually a really challenging stamp, in my opinion, so wish me luck here. Um, I haven't practiced with this one for a very long time because of the curved, uh, it's curved nature. All right, so I'm gonna stick with the, you know, I've never done this one with craft foam. This is an older design. I'm gonna stick with the two and a half pound, which should be plenty. If I need to, I'll follow it up with a four pound. Um, this size stamp can handle uh, a four pound uh, pressure. So, all right, let's do it. Oh, 
That looks really good. Yep, yep, I like it. I'm not gonna, this one would be maybe harder to set and turn again because it's got, no, actually it's not bad. Especially when you have the underlining again, you've got the extra little gill. Um, so it would be, but I don't need to on this one. I'm kind of tempted to, which is bad because as soon as I second guess myself, uh, it doesn't come out as well the second time. I'm gonna leave it and flatten it. Not on the foam to waste it. I'm flattening it partially because I'm done with it and partially because it makes it easier for the next stamp, the next one. All right, silver. A lot of times people say that they are, they have a, it's fine on copper, but they have a hard time on silver. So, and I don't usually use silver because I make a lot of stamp impressions and it gets, copper alone gets kind of spendy. So I am going to see here if I've got enough of a, enough room. Let's turn it around. I believe so. Yep, I do. Okay. I'm going to actually, uh, I'm turning it around and, and on this one, I'm going to drive the mountains in as a place to set it a little more stable. And I'm going to use the two and a half pound hammer, which should be fine. In this case, I might opt for the four pound, but I'm so used to this hammer. You know how that is, right? Let's go. Nope, I bounced all over the place. All right, let's try it again. Oh, I didn't use foam. I used paper. Ah, that's going to make the difference. Like, what? All right. And you know what? I'm going to... No, I'm going to do two and a half pound. It should work just fine. All right. Foam. And let's bring it over here. A little bit of scraping. Let's slide it over. All right. Let's get a good, good, good whack here. No ifs, ands, or buts. All right. The top part of it, which is what I was aiming for, did um, impress. I think foam is the key, enough of a soft underlayment to help drive it in um, so that it sets. And let's turn it around because that's just how it goes with me and my, my technique. All right, let's take a look at the bottom again. I need this side over here hit a little bit more. So for me, what I do is I'll hit that side and then hit the other side kind of drive it in there and then the other corner all right that looks that looks really good so I don't recommend using just paper with this one I recommend using something a little softer perhaps um, you know what I'd like to I'll experiment with that later oops I need the paper so I don't damage I'll keep the silver looking good there we go. All right. Ooh, that looks exceptional. Man, I love craft foam. Mm mm mm. 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 All right. So let's take a peek. Let's take a peek at the results, and then I'll show a photo at the end. We've got the acorn. We've got the lower one, which is paper here and craft foam, and then this one was craft foam. And then this one is, I didn't set that one at all. I didn't set it at all. Bad, bad. And then this one actually set really well and then continue to hammer really well. So I'm going to give these a quick patina and I'll come back and we'll take a look at it. The acorn, Florida corner, paper versus foam, left to right. Um, leaf line, dance curved, and the mountain.